Okay, so I have been toying with trying to um, etch on laser and for one of the stands, you know, you put the uh, the uh, plastic piece here on the stands and I have spoke to multiple people and been researching that's been weeks messing with this and burning and trying all kind of samples and designs and different heat and stuff. Um, I'm going to show you the method that's worked best for me and I'm actually going to do it for you and we are going to see how well it actually works. A couple of things I've done, if you can see this, um, I'm ha I left the uh, the brown tape onto this. I don't have one handy to show you the brown stuff that comes on the sticky stuff and I just have a difficult time cleaning it off. I've tried goof off, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, soap everything and I can't, I just can't get it. Here's another one with three different things. You probably can't see it very well. A snowman, some numbers and stuff, and this one here seemed to be the best. And it showed up the best on the light, and I was tickled with it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to do it with you and show you how I did it and how I'm doing and how and all my settings. Um, so the first thing um, I want to show you is well, let's. I'm going to show you. So what I came up with the best method was this. That is black, and what it is, it's a matte black. It's a peelable rubber paint. If you can kind of see that, it's a peel coat. It says peelable uh, rubber coating, and it's actually really cool. So, and I get, I just got this at my local hardware store. Um, it actually is really neat. You can actually take this corner and kind of peel it up, it's kind of stretchy, which I'll show you when we get done. But what I did was I took the uh, glass, I took this, uh, the coating off. And you, it's important you take both sides off because it will burn through this, and you don't want it to burn the other side and then make a mark on the back side of it. So take both sides off and then spray it really good with that and then let it dry and then this is what you get. So um, I'm gonna put this here and that's what we're gonna burn on today. And we are going to do that. So what I wanna do is, another thing is, <clears throat> a lot of you might already know this, but I burned this. It says Dustin and it's a fire truck. And I know it's really bright in here. I have some big bright lights in here. Problem is, is I've burnt it on here, facing this way, but turns out it's supposed to be reversed. And you know, I don't know why it just went out of my head. It's supposed to be on the back side. When you look at it from the back through, it looks amazing. So it's backwards. So we have to invert the image because that's what we're gonna burn on top. So first I'm gonna start with, as I always do, um, I measure my working area of what I want to do and I already measured this this is four and a half inches by four and a half inches working area that I'm going to be working in and um, I always do that with every project yep four and a half inches so knowing that I'm going to create a workable area for me to work in so I'm going to go up here to create a rectangle and then I'm just going to create it I don't want it to fill I want just line I'm gonna unlock it and choose 4.5 by 4.5. And then I'm gonna click the arrow and I'm going to go arrange, I'll, sorry, arrange, move select, selected objects to the lower left. So it puts it down here. And then I'm going to take my fire truck, which is SVG5, let me pull it over here and I'm gonna drag my truck in. Now that my truck's here, I'm going to move it to a second layer. So as you can see, my first one here um, is just called border, it's layer zero. And I'm going to go down the bottom here and click 01. And so I'm going to double click on 01, reset the default, and I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. I actually want it on just fill. So this is my truck and I have it on fill. And um, my working area is 4.5, so I'm gonna wanna make this the largest area here. I'm gonna go like 4.4, I guess. Uh, no, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me click away from that. Let me undo that. So um, click on it, make sure that you lock it so that um, it stays uh, uniform, you know, um, say left and right, up and down, X and Y. So when you change one, it um, stays with the other. So the largest, I'm gonna go 4.5, and now it will readjust the height. So I'm actually gonna do 
just so it's a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to click away from it, and then I'm gonna click it, make sure it's selected, then I'm gonna hold the shift key and select the box. It's important that you select the box second, or last, whatever. And then um, come up, arrange, align, centers. And it's gonna put the fire truck dead center of my square box. Click away from it, and then come up top here to zoom to frame selection. So now it puts me here. Now you see my 4.5 inch working area. So I'm definitely within that. It's centered in and looks really good. Now I have done this with another one. And so I'm gonna just tell you my speeds and feeds. Actually, let me expect, I forgot about the name. So let me make it a little bit smaller here. Let me come back up here and just shrink this down because here, I want to do the name Dustin. So I'm going to do D-U-S-T-I-N. And I want to make it stencil font. Somewhere here. Oh my gosh, I'm like going backwards here. Stencil. So, if my fire truck, oh shoot, let me click away from that. So if my fire truck, I want this to be, the, the actual width of it to be 4.4. And then I'm going to select the box, and then do arrange, align, centers, and I can actually move it down with my cursor. Oh, my bad, everything's selected. I'm, Control Z. Let me do that again. Select here, select the box, go arrange, align centers, and then click away from it. Then click the words and use my keypad to move them down. That's probably pretty good. And then I want to make my fire truck bigger. Probably like that. So again, I'll click my fire truck. Click the frame, and um, this time I'm going to click this one here, which is align objects of vertical centers, and it's going to just align that object in the center. So I'm going to click away, click the fire truck, and I'm going to. So one of the tricks is if you when you move your cursor keys, if you hold the control key, you will move only a little bit, and that actually looks pretty good. Except I don't like the word Dustin being that big, so I'm going to. I'm going to say, if this is 3.2, the width, I'm going to make this 3.2. And then I'm going to move this up a tad. I think right there. I'm going to select both of them. Arrange. I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. Kind of like that. That's probably pretty good. So now that it's selected, I'm going to hold the shift key, select the outer frame, and then click centers. So now, and I actually went to arrange, align, centers. So now it's pretty much center, and it looks pretty good, I must say. I think that's actually pretty good how I want to do it. I want to move this up just a tad, I think. Uh, let me ungroup it, click away, click this, and I just want to move it up a little bit, like right there, I think it's good. So now I'm going to click them both again. I'm going to arrange, I'm gonna group them. And one other thing now is, now that I have that, remember I was saying we need to um, invert the image because it's gonna be on the back side and it needs to be reversed. So now that it's grouped, click on it and then go up to um, arrange and flip horizontal. And now you'll see it's backwards, which is exactly what we want. So now, I'm going to go to click on it and I'm going to double click on my layer and I already have experimented with so many different speeds and fees and everything and for what I'm doing here this is the best for me um, that has worked the best so for the paint I used 20 speed and 85 power and I lowered my um, lines per inch down to 200 I also turned on my overscanning 
and I did that at 3.5%. The overscanning allows it, you, you pull it up in the, uh, um, um, in the manual, basically what it does is it goes just past the end of the scanned mark a little bit so that it gives it time to come back so it doesn't stop right on the end, which sometimes you may notice that your ends get burnt a lot and the inside's not, it's because the laser stops right there and never turns off and then goes and then goes. So it's almost like a double burn every time. So um, 20 speed, 85 power. Don't forget I'm in inches a minute, I'm not in millimeters a minute. Um, if you click OK and then you go up to uh, edit, I'm sorry, edit settings and change it to millimeters a minute, click OK, double click. So you can see now, I'll leave it up for a second, you can see my settings, speed 508, still power 85 and um, the lines per inch. I don't need the air assist on. Not that it really matters, but and anyway, I'm going to change that back to inches. So basically, that's what we got. That's the size. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty much ready to burn. So I'm going to switch your camera over to the spot. And I let me change this here. Whoops, it's probably not better. Hold on here. That's fine. So I want to make it bigger here for you. So basically, again, what I'm doing is um, I'm going to just set this here where I know it's going to be just square on my board. Pull this over and turn the machine on. By the way, this is going to smell, so make sure you have good ventilation, especially when you're burning paint. So, what I'm going to do is I this I'm going to do what I do every time I comes on. I right-click devices, it disconnects, reconnects. I go to move, set origin, get position, put the zero so I know I'm right where everything is. I click fire, and I make sure that the laser is on, which you should see it on on the board, and come back to here and basically <clears throat> I'm going to click this box and I'm going to go arrange move laser to the left lower selection so it right now thinks it's at the bottom left of my uh, four and a half inch square so I'm going to like turn the fire button on and I'm going to move it up if you can see it not sure how I'm going to um, Zoom in here for you a little bit. So you can see I'm right there, kind of where I need to be at. And then I'm gonna turn the fire off. And um, actually what I'm gonna do is come up to my border. I'm gonna change it to speed is 110 and power is one. Not sure that'll be enough, but just for, and make sure it's online, click okay. Turn this output off and turn this output on and then click start. As you can see, it's gonna run right up along the edge. That's the frame, and to me, it looks like it's a little farther over. So I'm gonna go back to origin. I'm gonna move, turn the fire on. I think it's a little bit, so if you're not sure, if you wanna see the dot right there, right? So what I do is I turn the dot on, the dot, the laser, and I go to range, move laser to the uh, laser to the right of the selection. So now that it's moving, I can kind of see is it more gap here, is it more gap here? Right now it looks pretty good actually. I'm going to move it back, and now it's going to move back, and I'm actually going to, my left and right is good, my x axis is really good. So now I'm going to go arrange, move laser to the top. And I can kind of compare the gap that was here to the gap that was here. And I actually think I want to move it up a tad. So I just grabbed the wheel a little bit. If you, you can't see me a little bit over here. I, want to, I grabbed the wheel here, but it's on the side here. And just kind of move up a little bit. And then go to arrange, move laser to the lower part. And it looks good. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn the 
turn the laser off, go to cuts, and tell it to run one more time. Watch the laser as it's going right around here. It looks pretty darn good. So my frame looks perfect of where it's gonna go. One thing I wanna show you, if you notice where my laser goes when it's done, when it, it actually was, it starts here, but it goes up here. One thing I like to do is if I go to origin, that puts it back here. When, when it's done, I like for my laser to be out of the way. So what I do is I go, let me make this smaller so you can see. I go up here to move. Uh, my distance, two inches is fine. And I tell it to go up. Again, I'm gonna go one more. And it doesn't matter if I go over. And then once I'm there, I go here and I click set finish position. So I click that, now that when it's done burning, that's where it's gonna go. And if you'll see, I'm gonna tell it to go to origin, I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna tell it to run a square again, and watch where it goes when it's done. And I like that because it gets out of my way and I can actually see the product that's done. And then I won't actually bump it. I actually probably would like it up a little further, you know what I mean? But actually, I put, so I won't bump it, it gets out of the way. So, with that being said, I'm going to go back to origin. I'm going to turn off the border and turn on the cut. I'm going to um, just double check everything. I'm just going to call it truck. It's fine. 2085. It's on fill. I did never do fill end line, just fill. Especially since you're doing the over scanning, you don't need the line on the outside. Um, and on plastic, and then the uh, line sprinch uh, 200, which would like the DPI, and then click OK. And I think we are ready to burn. So I am going to make sure that your let me move this out of the way. Whoops. Make sure that your start from user origin is where it's going to start from because that's exactly where I have the laser. And make sure your job origin at the bottom left and that's it you're ready to go so i am going to go ahead and start this and uh watch your eyes it, it says it's going to be out of bounds but it's really not because it thinks you're here but you're actually here so you could just click yes to ignore it and then as you can see she's starting to burn and i'm gonna what you could do also is if you look at my screen if you right click and you go to preview down here, one hour and 30 minutes. That kind of gives you an idea of how long it's going to take to burn. So about an hour and 30 minutes, and I'm going to pause my video until it's done, and then we're going to finish this puppy up. Okay, so we are back a couple hours later, and as you can see, I didn't touch anything. That's exactly what I have. That's how it burnt, and um, it looks pretty good. So I am going to turn this off, turn the laser off, and as you can see how it burnt. And the reason why I said to take off the back side was because as you can see it burnt through. And if you'd have had that back if you'd have had that back layer on there, it would have uh, probably made marks on the other side. So let's um, take over here and I want to show you. I'm going to change my camera. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is not change my camera. So, this stuff is actually really cool. I'm going to try and stay in the video here. So, what I like to do is just start with a little bit of peel with this, this rubber paint. Try and get the edge. you got to really be careful with this little picky thing. You don't want to scratch up your your final product here. Um, let me start here. I'm going to pause this in a minute. I'm going to bore you with my 20 minute long paint peeler. But as you can see, I'm trying to get this. Believe me, when you grab an end of it, it should come right off. <laughs> it's a lot easier than that. Come on. There we go. As 
you can see the paint is it's rubberized so basically here we go what I'm going to do is peel all of this off and as you can see it's coming off really well and then I'm going to use my little picker here and I'm going to just pick off these pieces lightly so I don't scratch any of the uh, rubberized thing and then when I get this all off I'm going to come back and unfold the video for you there we go so that's what I'm going to do and I will be right back okay so I have picked all of the black off and uh, depending on what you're trying to cut to be let me let me actually change cameras to be uh, how detailed it is sorry wrong one as you may or may not be able to see I picked all the black off and all I did was wipe it down with um, all I did was wipe it down with Windex let me see if you can see it any better if I uh, not really, because it's obviously it's clear. But I did not have to use any type of cleaning solvent or anything. All I did was use Windex on it, so it came out. I think absolutely incredible. It, it the uh, I wish I could you could see it better the detail that it did, and I think that's part of the DPI that it chose. So I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna put it in my base, and I'm gonna turn my light off so you can see what it will look like. I don't know where my remote went for it, but anyway. Um, let me turn this off. Let's see if you can see it. I'm actually going to change camera so you can see it over there. So there you can actually see the final work. That's green. Unfortunately, you can't see it that well. So that's red. And or, I'm sorry, I just want to show you that this is the opposite side that was burnt. This is the side that was burnt. So as you can see, it's not as bright. This is the side that we actually burned on right here. That's why we did it backwards. It's not as bright as the actual looking at the back of it. And it's just so much better. And that's the finished product. I absolutely love it. I think it came out perfect. As you can see the line detail, um, that rubberized paint, I almost did no cleaning whatsoever, just Windex, and I probably could use a little bit more Windex, but um, other than clean it off, and just want to share with you, if you want to uh, look at my screen again, before I, before I go, the, uh, my my burn settings are here. This is, I use inches, you know, 20 and 85. And I think the lines per inch is key. When I first tried my first ones, um, I was doing, I was doing a 160 uh, lines per inch and I think it was too far apart. I think it wasn't giving me the detail that I wanted. And then I cut another one at a uh, slower speed which is like 115 and to and honestly it actually heated so much that it actually warped my um let me change it back here it actually warped the plastic and you probably can't see it here. oh actually you can see it if you look at it see how it's warped it actually warped it at 15 and i have a 15 watt um laser but at 15 speed and 85 power it actually warped my uh, the board and it's brown as you can see and as you can see this one turn it off it's like beautiful it's like perfect no cleaning nothing whatsoever so I hope that helped everyone of course everybody has something different and I really uh, really hope that you guys can go ahead and burn some acrylic now if you want, I'll put in my uh, description line the uh, just the exact ones that I bought from Amazon. But the base, the bases are pretty cool. They're interchangeable. They just come right off. And you can actually put on these, which I'm going to make some Christmas ones. I have a snowman that I want to reburn again. But uh, and that's pretty much it. I hope that helped everybody. And uh, have a wonderful day. Jungle.